Hey YouTube, welcome back to another video. I'm gonna play a bunch in this video, so I don't need to play at the beginning, I hope. This is a demonstration of how I practice playing two instruments. Literally what I do day to day to maintain both like how to play them individually and then also how to double, how to play them like right back to back. And uh, here's my demonstration. I just got this book uh, for free with this trombone, actually. It is the Simply Singing for Winds by Brad Edwards. And this is the medium bass clef book. Honestly, it's pretty easy, especially for someone at my level. But it's good stuff to just sight read, play a couple times, um, really get some like patterns and snippets in your head. And it's a good demonstration of what I do to practice doubling. So literally, I just open this up to a page. I've been playing straight through this. This is number eight. I'm actually at number 26, but number eight's a nice easy one that I can use. And uh, I'm gonna play 8B. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna play it on tenor trombone. Usually, I will have a metronome and tuner going at the same time. Just for the sake of the video, I'm not gonna use a metronome today. I'll just play the first eight measures. <laughs> So not perfect. There's a couple little like note starts, a little bit of fuzz. I've definitely played bass all day today, which is the truth. I warmed up on bass and practiced a bunch, and I just got this out to make this video. So tenor feels like I can play it, but it doesn't feel like home bass. So now I'm gonna get out my bass. I'm gonna play the exact same thing. <laughs> Some of the same problems, the last 16th notes, not happy with those, blah, 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 very slow response at the chops. A couple little intonation things. One of the really important things about playing um, or doubling on two instruments is finding the intonation tendencies, um, and you have to get used to them. So when you pick the horn up, you instantly know, oh, high G, high F sharp, they are in these positions. Those are the biggest differences almost always. But there's also small changes. There's differences in where the bell is. You have to get used to those so fast if you have to literally double like on a gig. And this is a really good way to do it. So what I'm thinking when I play these is sound concept, sound concept, sound concept, body concept. What am I doing with my body that's just a little bit different than the other instrument? When I pick up the bass, I instantly go, and I try to feel physically a little bit larger, a little bit wider, a little more open, a little more chest voice. Oh, I try to feel all those things right away when I pick up the instrument. So when I start playing, there's not four or five bars of me going, whoa, okay, there, that's how it works. Right there, it took about a bar for me to figure it out. Now I'm going to go back. I'm going to pick up the tenor again and do the same thing. And for this, what's going through my head is sound concept, sound concept, sound concept, which primarily is let the instrument sound like itself. I'm not trying to force it into something. I'm really trying to let it sound like something, which is a lot harder than it sounds. And then body-wise, I'm still thinking chest voice, oh, but I'm not thinking quite as wide, quite as large, just a little more... A little more focus. And that feels much more comfortable that time to just instantly get into it. Obviously the articulations, the, the sound concept is just going to be different and I'm going to let that come out naturally by the instrument, the mouthpiece, all of this combination just kind of do its own thing. So once it feels a little bit more comfortable, and usually I just run through this once on each, as written. Then I do it down an octave on bass drum on. Um, it would probably be good to do these also in like tenor clef down an octave, tenor clef as written, tenor clef up an octave, I don't know. I tend to do it as written on both, down an octave on bass. <laughs> 
sharp just a couple notes where I was like ooh, that's wrong but overall that feels pretty easy and again a lot of that just comes down to me picking up the instrument and thinking I'm about to play something down an octave I need to think a little larger I need to think a little easier I want to have only the one point of resistance right here which goes for every instrument but especially on bass if you start getting a little too tight here this stuff's gonna be really hard to play. So I'm really trying to loosen up all of this stuff, have it be free, and have this be the only point of resistance. So that's a basic rundown of what I do. I literally play these in random order. So I might flip to one. The next one, for instance, is this. That's down an octave, and I might start with that down an octave on bass trombone. And I'll play the whole thing, it'll feel however it feels, and then maybe I'll switch to tenor, play it as written. <laughs> through that it feels a little more comfortable and that felt okay the F the high F felt a little strained to me so once I go to bass I'm gonna try and make sure that does not feel that way I can still institute corrections on the previous instrument on the new one <laughs> centered. But you get the idea. I'll run through those in a random order. Down octave on bass, as written on bass, as written on tenor, in any order. And I just do that straight through. Um, I'll just keep flipping. I think yesterday I probably did 10 of these. The day before I probably did another eight or nine. These are very short. They're very easy. And they're in two keys each. So they really don't take a long time. If you wanted to do this with other etudes, something harder, I would definitely not do as many. Um, I'm just doing a bunch because they are very short. Another uh, option for this kind of thing is the Chimera 55 phrasing studies. They're really good, they're very short. They're not super rangy, um, and they're really good to just dial in that ability to switch. I also do the same thing with Arbens. I'll do my entire Arbens, Arbens routine as written on this, as written on bass, or uh, as written on uh, tenor, and down on octave on bass in random orders, um, and I'll just flip all the way through, play the entire thing on every instrument. And that doesn't have to be just tenor bass. Some days when I'm like, you know what? I'm really tired of playing bass trombone. I'm gonna play tenor bass trumpet, or euphonium contra. I mean, it can be literally any two instruments that you can choose. Um, but that's generally what I do to practice doubling. There are days where I don't practice doubling. Like today, until I got that out, I probably wasn't gonna practice doubling. I was just gonna do a whole routine on this. Um, it doesn't have to be every single day, but the more often you can do it, the better you're gonna feel about switching between instruments. And that's about all I got. I'll see y'all next time in the next video. Bye-bye.